Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, if you find yourself in a deep hole of your own creation, stop digging. If you're at your eyeballs in debt, it's time to stop spending. But many people cannot stop digging. They cannot stop spending with dire consequences. But it isn't just individuals who have financial problems. Most of you look too young to recall 1976, when the government led by Jim <laughs> Callaghan faced a sterling crisis. The value of the pound plummeted and the government was unable to raise sufficient cash to maintain their spending commitments. They were forced to go cap in hand to the International Monetary Fund for a 2.3 billion rescue package. This is regarded as a national humiliation. They're not as bad as 2003 when Gemini scored no points in the Eurovision Song Contest. <laughs> At the next party conference, Callaghan said, we used to think that you could spend your way out of recession and boost employment by increasing expenditure, but I tell you in all candour, that option no longer exists, and in so far as it did ever exist, it only worked on each occasion by boosting inflation and by increasing unemployment. Now these words are amongst the most important ever spoken by a modern British politician. For a left-wing Prime Minister to admit that too much state spending can be dangerous, whilst being barred by a rowdy rabble of bearded belligerent Bolsheviks in his own party ranks marked a turning point in economic policy making. Britain now is in even bigger debt than it was in 1976. Indeed, £2.3 billion pounds is a pittance in comparison. Loose change. But have we heeded the wise words of Mr Callaghan? I fear not. Incredibly, the solution to the debt crisis, notwithstanding the austerity measures, is even more spending, even more borrowing, and invoking something mysterious, esoteric to facilitate this, something radically new with a fancy highfalutin name which aspires to give it an air of legitimacy, credibility, and authority. Quantitative easing. QE. It's the creation of money out of thin air, just like pulling a rabbit out of the magician's hat. <laughs> it's incredible. Billions of pounds conjured from nowhere by pressing a few buttons on the Bank of England computer, and it's aimed ostensibly to boost the economy and prevent the nightmarish spectre of deflation. It sounds terrific though. Money, money, war money. What can possibly be wrong with that? The problem is, it's leading to inequality, massive inequality. It seems to be benefiting an elite and it may lead to social unrest. In 1933, during the last Great Depression, a board game was invented, which I'm sure you've all played. Monopoly. Now think about this. Everybody just sits around the board. Nobody works a monopoly. The bank gives you loads of money and little piece to chase around the board with. £200 every time you pass go. That's quantitative easing every time you pass go. It's a property speculation game at the end of which there's one person who, after being a rent-charging oligarch, owns all the properties and everybody else is bled dry. No matter that, they were receiving money the whole time. <clears throat> And the fact that QE has been administered the whole time means that the asset prices of those properties reaches astronomical levels, bankrupting everybody on the board bar one. If ever you have played Monopoly, you will understand the feelings of pain, anguish and despair when you land on Mayfair. <laughs> and you're forced to hand over £2,000 to a smug older sister or a smirking kid mother. <laughs> There's only one winner in the game of Monopoly, and this is what we see in today's societies. And the reason is that QE pushes up the price of assets, and most of these are owned by the wealthiest 5% of the population. And in order to have quantitative easing, you need almost zero interest rates. And this punitively penalises prudent savers. But the wealthiest elite, the top 5%, only have about 10% of investable cash assets in cash. 
The rest is in stocks, bonds, shares, derivatives, works of art, hedge funds, all of which have benefited massively from QE. It explains why, for example, houses in Florida recently sold for $140 million and a few weeks ago Paul Gauguin's painting of two Tahitian women, which was deemed worthless in 1895, sold for a record £197 million. Pounds. We are told that the injection of funds will benefit at all, but I can show you afterwards how it actually works in practice. I can sidle up to each of you in turn with a broad and welcoming smile, deceived by my captivating countenance and by my scintillating conversation, I will surreptitiously dip my hand into your pocket or your purse and gently extricate money. And at the end of that, each of you will be a little poorer and I considerably richer. That's how it works in practice, the elite benefit. And we are also told that this quantitative easing was conjured up by brilliant academics in the ivory halls of academia. But in reality, it was conjured up down there in the rabbit hole by none other than the mad hatter himself. <laughs> so, where will it lead us? Utopia, dystopia, Wonderland. Who knows? Whichever direction it takes, it's going to be an exhilarating ride. So easy does it. And hold on to your hats. <laughs>